There we go. Welcome to FGC. My name is Joseph Peterson. I'm the director of the Horticulture and Agriculture programs at Florida Gateway College. Here to my right is, is Eric Smith. He's my faculty. He also happens to be the teacher of our ORH 15-17 course that, that, that you're taking this semester. Uh, we are at the Mary Lee Martin Arboretum located here in Lake City at our Florida Gateway College campus. So what we're going to do today is we're going to we're going to go take a, a walk around campus. Well, the, the Arboretum, we're going to talk about different plants, what's going on in uh, in this Arboretum as an introduction to your class. This is the landscape plants class and uh, you will be talking about all of these different trees, shrubs, plants, ground covers, you name it. So uh, again, as a brief introduction, we want to show you what we've got at least here in Lake City and uh, some, some really cool plants. <clears throat> So, uh, for example, behind us, oh, and feel free, this is a 360-degree video, virtual lab, so you're able to click on your screen if you're not using virtual reality glasses. You can click on your screen and drag it. You can look up, you can look down, you can look at the ground, uh, everything. So, here, here's uh, the, the first one. If you see this, you can, look, well, you know, we'll get up a little bit close. This is uh, azaleas. Zalia. Now, there's hundreds of different varieties of azaleas, especially in Florida. As we walk around, you're going to see, if you see any color out there right now, all the azaleas are in bloom, and this is the middle of February. Uh, this is, it's just a beautiful, it's a very popular landscape shrub. And does very well. So let's go for a walk. Here over on our left, uh, where you see me pointing, is a drake elm, which is the Elmus parvifolia. Uh, that happens to be one of the most common uh, elm trees and wildly popular in the landscape residential setting. Um, also here to our left, we have a Pinus palustris, which is the longleaf pine. If you look up and notice, the needles on the longleaf are anywhere from 8 to 12 inches long. Uh, also on this tree, you will see Toxicodendron radicans, which is better known as poison ivy. So make sure you don't uh, get into any of that while you're out in the woods. Now, a little interesting tidbit about poison ivy that's not really well known. Um, the same growing conditions for poison ivy out in the wild are the same growing conditions required for wild impatience. Wild impatience... Uh, the sap from wild impatience is a, is the is a toxin neutralizer for poison ivy toxin. So it's 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 pretty cool if you get some poison ivy and you don't have the ability to clean it off you're, you're quick if you can find some impatience. Now this is a cultivated garden so we don't have any. Um, <clears throat> but anyway here this is uh, this again this is an old old plant this is a gardenia gorgeous plant but you Absolutely. can notice right now there's some yellowing going on in the leaves let's see if we can we can pull up some leaves here do you see the the uh, the oh. yellowing on this um, Eric your thoughts uh, let's see it's either going to be one of three deficiencies uh, nitrogen uh, manganese or iron okay most likely right now but in this area I would say it's most likely a nitrogen deficiency uh, nitrogen deficiency leaves the veins green with the outside, the, the in between the veins, it, it turns them yellow. Um, and it does, it possibly could. Now, one of the ways that I know to combat this, because I, I've used it several times in the landscape industry, is uh, sulfur. Because gardenia love acidic soils. And in our soils where they're not too acidic, you can add sulfur to the ground and it will free up the nitrogen. Uh, it makes the ground more acidic, uh, frees up the nitrogen so that the plants can use it, uh, which is really cool. Uh, here, I love this plant. This is the pineapple guava. Now, this really shouldn't be, we're in a zone eight. Uh, this is pushing it for the pineapple guava to be growing here. This will produce a fruit, I think it's what, October, November? It is. Uh, we'll have a fruit, your, your guava, it's a little bit smaller than the traditional cultivated guava, but it is still delicious nonetheless. But the flowers are so cool. They're white with this this pink heart, a, a right. reddish magenta heart, and it's uh, it's hard to describe it without being able to see it's it. It's fascinating. Not it too much of a scent to it, like the gardenia smells amazing. Uh, not too much of a scent, but just a gorgeous flower. And again, you can see more azaleas over here, um, all Actually, different color all azaleas, uh, uh, reds, purples, azaleas. pinks. There's dwarf azaleas. We've got some tea tr uh, tea trees. Right? No, sweet, tea sweet, olives. tea olive, tea olive. Tea olive. Uh, let's go this way, Eric. Yep. Um, 
here we've got a palm tree that uh, over on our left that you can see this palm tree here is the uh, Chinese fan palm Chinese no European 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 fan, fan palm, fan palm. Yeah, see even as <laughs> even as teachers we, we, we can get confused we and get say confused things so this is the European fan palm the European fan palm is cold hardy to our area I think even up to zone seven, seven. Yep. in hardiness and you'll be learning the, about hardiness zones in class this semester um, but just a great cold hardy palm. We've got a Nandina or, or a uh, fire. Heavenly bamboo. Yep, there we go. This is fun. These are th these are the same plant, but two different varieties. This is the Liriope muscari, and this is the Aztec grass. This is a variegated Liriope, and this is a standard Liriope. Yep. So genetically almost the same. There was just a mutation, and they cultivated that mutation to grow the variegated variety. Uh, another variegated plant we have right back here. Uh, that is a variegated um, japonicum. Uh, help me. Ligustrum. Ligustrum. Look, variegated <laughs> ligustrum. I was drawing a blank. Uh, a uh, again, a very popular landscape plant, a good barrier plant. Um, we've got a small boxwood. Now, again, boxwood will grow, and they're hardy down to zone 9. Zone 8, really, zone 8 and 7, they like it. They'll grow all the way up to zone 5. Just understand, they are very slow growing. I have these Extremely in my yard, slow growing. and they are this size, and they're about 40 years old. So Now, you know how we talked about the... Um, the yellowing in the gardenia over there, that was a nitrogen or a nutrient deficiency. With the boxwood, the new growth is going to be this lime green. That's standard. That's normal. It's not, it's not it's diseased. It's not a deficiency, although, but there are some that look somewhat yellow, but still. Yeah, it's the, not. the newer growth is lighter color. Now, this is one of my favorite palms for North Florida and even further north up into the Carolinas and Georgia. This happens to be what's called a pindo palm or a, a jelly palm. Now, what's really cool on this, if you ever get the chance, uh, the palm trees, all of their fruit, and it doesn't matter the palm tree, all of their fruit is ed edible. But early pioneers to Florida would use this. There's such a high quantity of pectin in this fruit. Uh, in yes. the jelly palm that they would make jellies out of it and they didn't need to add apple pectin and everything else and they could preserve their fruit and maintain it longer in jars and, and uh, it, just just an awesome but it's got this silvery gray green foliage it's it's a fun plant when it again when it's pruned nicely this one right. needs some pruning to remove you know some of those boots clean it up make it look nice but a great great palm tree and they're great because they are tolerant to our area so they take cold somewhat quite well unlike many of the other palms that we have yes uh, in fact i only know the the european fan palm the pindo, pindo palm and the needle palm in fact the needle palm there's a beautiful specimen of it growing up in the u.s botanical gardens in washington dc oh. and that's at a zone wow. 5b right. and that's so that's about as cold. far north as you're going to get here uh, not a traditional landscape tree uh, but this is a citrus, and you can you can tell by citrus it uh, it'll have thorns on it. You can crush the leaves. That's got some mites on it. Um, you can crush the leaves, and you really get the citrus fragrance citrus from that. Um, over here, again, we we've got bamboo, bamboo speciosa. There are hundreds, if not maybe even thousands, of varieties of bamboo, all cultivated differently. If you want to plant bamboo, again, this needs to be planted in the right place. Right. There are, there are uh, types of bamboo. There's clumping bamboo, which is non-invasive, and then there's spreading bamboo. And I'll tell you, spreading bamboo sucks. <laughs> so, um, and then just a couple more plants. Oh yeah, Eric. Nope. I was just gonna say right here to your oh straight ahead. Um, we have the king sago, which is a palm uh, that also is uh, takes takes our our cold weather well. Um, these also come in male and female varieties um, most are male here uh, I have seen a few females but uh, and the fruit are toxic yes. especially the pets and if you have they, dogs they come it, right and, out of the center if you can see it's actually right in this area uh, these are very spiny down in that area also, so be careful. Now, these are, uh, how do you say it, Cy cichlids, cyads, cyads, uh, C-Y-A-D? 
Uh, either it's, Something like it's that. It's like a palm. This is a palm-like <laughs> right. plant. It is not actually An a palm. Actual and true it, palm. And it dates back actually to prehistoric times. There are fossil records of this plant yes. um, dating back to Jurassic periods, the same as the ginkgo. We only have one ginkgo on, on campus. Not even going to show you. It doesn't look too good. So uh, <laughs> we've got a cabbage palm here that we're seeing now. We've yes. got some Washingtonias with their with the beards on the Washingtonias. And when you see the uh, the old... The, um, the the stems of the the palm fronds on there when they're attached to the trunk those are called boots. If you see a trunk like this on a sable palm that's smooth, it's called slick. So when you ever have to buy a palm tree, uh, they're going to ask you, do you want it booted or do you want it slick? Um, and that'll just that'll you know tell you a type. And then straight ahead, you can also see some white flowering azalea that are almost done blooming. But um, feel free to, you know, go through this video, take a look at some more things. Again, feel free to look around, see everything that's going on. There's, this, is, this is a lot of fun. Absolutely. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this as an introduction to ORH 1517, the Landscape Plants class. We're excited to be your teachers and to assist you with this. As your advisor, if there's anything that I can do, please let me know. And again, and please Eric, contact me if you have any questions, comments, uh, issues, and I'll help you out as much as I can. Monday through Friday, we're on campus, and, and uh, we can help anytime. out. Anytime. And via email, we're always available. Absolutely. All right, have a wonderful day, and take care. Bye. Thanks.